Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. Uh, this weekend, everybody is celebrating our Independence Day as a nation, the freedom that we enjoy uh, as Americans. Uh, but today and every day is also an opportunity to celebrate the freedom that we have from sin and death, which has been graciously granted to us through our Savior, Christ Jesus. Uh, that'll be the focus for our worship here, God's grace to us. Uh, we'll begin with our opening hymn, By Grace I'm Saved. May God bless our worship. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, as we approach our holy God in worship, we must confess the sin that surrounds us, fills us, and separates us from him. We ask him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Lord of life, I confess that I am by nature dead in sin. For faithless worrying and selfish pride, for sins of habit and sins of choice, for the evil I have done and the good I have failed to do, you should cast me away from your presence forever. O Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me for Jesus' sake. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. In his great mercy, God made us alive in Christ, even when we were dead in our sins. Hear the word of Christ through his called servant. I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The works of our God are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise. Oh, Lord. 
be with you. And also, and also with you. you. Let us pray. O oh God, the strength of all who trust in you, mercifully hear our prayers. Be gracious to us in our weakness, and give us strength to keep your commandments in all we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> Our first lesson is taken from Exodus chapter 3. Here we find God graciously calling Moses to service. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the far side of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn off. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, Here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you. And this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Moses said to God, Suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, What is his name? And what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name by which I am to be remembered from generation to generation. This is God's word. We join in singing the hymn response. Timothy chapter 1. This will serve as the basis for our sermon later on. 
Paul writes, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who has given me strength, that he considered me faithful, appointing me to his service. Even though I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent man, I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. The grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly, along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. But for that very reason, I was shown mercy, so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his unlimited patience as an example for those who would believe on him and receive eternal life. Now to the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. This is God's word. We join in singing the verse of the day. Savior for this, the third Sunday after Pentecost, are taken from Matthew's account, chapter 9, beginning with the ninth verse. Here we see Jesus graciously calling Matthew into service. As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, he told him, and Matthew got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. This is the gospel of our risen King. We join in confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated, and the children are invited to come forward for the children's message. Good morning, everybody. How are you guys doing? I said, how are you guys doing? Good. Good, good. Hey, what? Did you guys hear any noises last night? Firecrackers. You heard firecrackers. Who else heard firecrackers? I did. Why were people lighting off firecrackers? Because they were it's a special day. It's what's a special day? <laughs> what is what are we celebrating this weekend? The fourth of July, the birthday of America. Okay, yeah, this is the day when our country this is Independence Day. This is I, I like your explain. It's the birthday of our country. It's the day when we became our own nation. We became free. Free at last. 
We, so we're lighting those fireworks to celebrate the freedom and the joy that we have because of uh, our freedom as a nation. Today is also a day where we celebrate another type of freedom. It's a, every day we celebrate our freedom from sin, our freedom from death. How did Jesus free us from death? How did he free us from sin? What did he do for us that sets us free? Do you remember what he did? Okay, does someone want to help? Okay, you can ask me a question after, okay? What did he do? He took away all of our sins by dying on the cross, and that set us free. So, although people are lighting on fireworks, what are some of the things that we do to celebrate our freedom? How are, how are we showing God we're happy today? What have we been doing in church? Showing his love. Showing his love, absolutely. And singing. And singing, absolutely. Very good. Thank you. Yeah, because he died on the cross. Very good, guys. Okay, let's fold our hands and let's thank Jesus for freeing us from sin by dying on the cross, okay? Dear Jesus, thank you for freeing us from all of our sin and from death by giving your life for us on the cross. Help us to celebrate that today and every day. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, you guys can go back and sit well, go back with Miss Dory for Kids Church, or you can sit with your parents. I'll, ask, I'll answer all questions after, after the service, okay? And we'll continue with singing our hymn of the day. Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The words for our consideration are taken from Paul's first letter to Timothy, chapter 1, verses 12 through 17. Please allow me just to read one of those verses again. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. This is God's word. Please bow your heads for prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. 
Please be seated. Dear fellow chosen children of God, have any of you ever heard of the Mercury 7? Anybody? You have. Anna, you know. Do you know who they are? Not their names, but do you know, do you know what, what they are? Astronauts. They're astronauts, yeah. They were the first seven men chosen to be our country's astronauts, to go into space. Yeah, back in the 19, late 1950s, the space race was on. You probably know that from going to all the, the aerodynamics uh, uh, museums with your father, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Too many, Kathy? <laughs> They were in the late 1950s. The space race was on, and our country was trying to find men who would have the guts uh, and the physical and mental capabilities of venturing into outer space. When we first started looking for for people that would be able to do this this awesome feat, uh, they had sent out an advertisement to all test pilots in the military, and they got over 500 applications. Now, when the, the country started whittling that down and eventually got it down to 69 men, and they brought those 69 candidates for being the first astronauts to Washington, D.C., where they just trained them and trained them for months and months. These guys have endured all sorts of testing. These men of brains and brawn had to endure oh, endless hours of psych evaluations and mind games. They also spent hours and hours on on tilt tables and treadmills. They had their feet submerged in freezing water. They had to drink castor oil. They had to do all sorts of tests. It was a grueling, grueling process. And at the end of those months and months and months of training, there were only 17 men left. Seven then, the best of the best, were chosen to work on the Mercury Project to be our country's first astronauts. These guys were superb physical beings, they, are, they have genius level IQs. Think you can make the cut? If you want to be a star basketball player, Jacob, it takes more than just natural talent. It takes practice, right? Yep. Yeah. But if you want to be a star football player, you got to spend those hours and hours in the gym, hours in the weight room, you got to work. You got to run wind sprints until your legs are going to collapse if you want to be a phenomenal athlete. If you want to earn an academic scholarship, you got to study your brains out. You have to have those mental capabilities, but you also have to work at it too. If you want to grab that job, you have to stand out. You have to have an impeccable resume. You have to nail the interview. There has to be something about you that makes the employer say, yeah, I'm picking him. I'm picking her. That's just the way the world works, right? There has to be something about us that makes someone choose us. So what was God thinking? Maybe that struck you as you heard those three lessons read. God chose him? The first lesson we heard about the calling of Moses. Now, Moses goes later on in that account. We didn't read it, but he talks about, Lord, I'm not a good speaker. My tongue always gets tied. But he was more than that. Why was Moses in Midian in the first place and not in Egypt where he was born? What had he done? He killed somebody. God chose him. God chose a murderer to be the leader of his people? Gospel, in the gospel for today. We heard about the calling of Matthew. What was Matthew's job? He was a tax collector. What were the tax collectors known for doing? Stealing from the pockets of the people, cheating their neighbors. Was Jesus that desperate? That he had to go dumpster diving in the dregs of society to try and find someone who would be able to follow him? God chose him. And in our second lesson, Paul, who was formerly known as Saul, what had Paul done earlier in his life? 
He says it in our lesson. He was a, a persecutor of the church, a blasphemer, a violent man. This is Paul, also Saul, who stood by while stones were being hurled at Stephen and he watched in delight. This is Paul who went on the road to Damascus to go and try and search out the Christians and hunt them down and kill them. Paul, who went after the church like a bloodthirsty beast, Paul is picked to be the, the instrument that will take the gospel to the Gentiles and Jews. God picked Paul. Some unlikely choices, huh? A murderer, a thief, and another murderer. Hmm. Every year, the NFL holds a combine. Uh, what's a combine? Who's my, who's my football fan? What's the combine? Anybody? It's a test test, yeah, it's, it's a testing time. They, they, they run them on tests of strength and speed and agility, try and see how many bench presses they can do, how fast their 40-yard their dash is, all that good stuff, how fast their feet are, everything. What if God had a Christian combine? What if he tested us to see whether or not we could get into heaven? What might be some of the things that God would test us on? Our worship attendance? We've been in here every single Sunday. Good candidates in church every single week. Our Bible class attendance? Our home devotion life? Our personal devotion life? Our family devotion life? Our prayer life? good candidate never has breathed or whispered a hurtful or hateful word good candidate has never grumbled or complained with anything that he has or has not been given if God had such a test who of us could stand God's standards are perfection perfection and none of us would be able to hold up under that. How is it possible then that we can be here today to celebrate the certainty of our salvation? There isn't one person in this room that doubts that Jesus loves them, that God has forgiven them all their sins. How can you be so confident? Well, Paul talks about that in our lesson for today. It's one of those words that we throw around a lot. It's a church word that maybe we don't take the time to fully grasp and appreciate what it really means. It's grace. The grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. That sweet grace, that undeserved kindness, that unearned love that God has showered down from heaven onto my bone-dry empty heart. Sweet grace. That love of God that showed itself through Jesus' life and death. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the worst. Paul says it wasn't anything in me that saved me. It was all because of what Christ has done. But that still doesn't explain why. Why would God choose Matthew or Moses or Paul or Brian or Jack or Kathy? Why would he choose me? We'll get to that. It had not been a good day for Lloyd. First of all, his inconsiderate wife had pressed the snooze button on the alarm clock, so he woke up late for work. And then when he, 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 he'd gone in the shower, he nicked himself several times shaving, he gets out into the kitchen and he sees that his kids had poured grape juice all over his work papers. Why is getting kind of flustered? Packs up his briefcase, storms out the door, gets into the garage, and he noticed that the, the, the left rear tire was flat. So now he's got to change that. He's all dirty, sweaty, 
He's got the mix from shaving, and he's driving to work, running into rush hour traffic. He's, he's frustrated, and finally there was a straw that broke the camel's back. Some dude came into his lane and cut him off. So Lloyd got bumper to bumper. He starts hammering on, on his horn. He's shaking his fist. He's so angry. He's so ticked off. And it wasn't before long that the red and blue lights started flashing in his rearview mirror. So Lloyd gets pulled over, and the police officer politely asked him to step out of his vehicle and place his hands behind his back, threw him in cuffs, and takes him to jail. Lloyd's sitting in his prison cell, wondering what's going on, ticked off because he's missing this important meeting that he had to be at, at, at work that morning. And about 30 minutes later, the arresting officer comes and says, Mr. Smith, I'm sorry, there's been some confusion. You see, I saw the Jesus fish on the back of your car, but I also saw the way you were driving and thought the car must be stolen because there's no way that a Christian would be driving like that. That story's not true, okay? <laughs> but here's one that is. This last month, I, I flew up to uh, New Hampshire, and as I was waiting in the, in the, the airport, uh, it was announced that in the flight that was waiting next to me going to New York was announced that they were going to have possibly a three-hour delay. Everybody started jumping up and down. They were so excited. <laughs> Not exactly. You could hear and see the frustration in the faces of those people. One gentleman, and I use that term loosely, gentleman, threw his bags down and stormed up to the council and just started to lay into this poor girl. And, and I was close, I could hear the conversation, and he was just going off how this was inappropriate, this was unacceptable, he couldn't believe it, I'm never flying this airline again. And, and this poor girl is just, I'm sorry, it's due to weather. I, 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 I'm sorry for any inconvenience. I, I don't know what to tell you. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. We've all been that guy, haven't we? Been the person who's lost their patience? Whether it was someone who cut us off, or when the, the air, airline got delayed, or when the girl at the, the checkout counter wouldn't take the coupon that I brought from home and I'm holding the item right in my hand but it doesn't seem to fit and she dares to ask me to go back and return it and grab the item, the right item that would work. Or when mom made spaghetti, how dare she? I wanted pizza tonight. And we throw a hissy fit. Or when our mom of a husband doesn't get off the couch and cut that grass, Or when our kids just won't listen. I lose my patience. When things aren't done according to my standards, in my time, the way I would have them done. Dear friends, just look back and marvel at the patience of God. In our Bible study for this morning, uh, earlier we, had, we, we went through, we were talking about patience today, and we had just went around and just started listing all sorts of examples of God's patience with people throughout the scriptures. How he waited 120 years and patiently warned the people before he sent the waters of the flood. How God patiently continued to provide for those belly-aching, groaning children of Israel as he led them through the desert. How God patiently continued to raise up judges like Samson and Deborah to lead the people when they had aligned themselves with those unbelieving nations. How God sent the Prince of Patience, our Savior, who continued to instruct gently those disciples when they just didn't seem to get it. Our God who's been patient with us day after day, calling me to repentance, reminding me of the forgiveness that I have in him. God 
God chose him? Why would God choose someone like Moses, a murderer? Someone like Matthew, a cheat and a thief. Someone like Paul, who hated his church. Why would God choose someone like me? We go back to our, our lesson for today. We were shown this mercy so that Christ Jesus might display his unlimited patience as an example for those who would believe on him and receive eternal life. God showed those people patience. He showed them mercy. He showed us patience. He showed us mercy. So we would reflect that patience, that love, that forgiveness in our lives to others. So we would point people to the reason for the patience and the mercy and love and forgiveness that we have for them back to Christ. The person sitting next to you on the plane isn't going to see Christ through your cursing. We're not doing the checkout clerk or children any favors when we lose our cool. Remembering God's patience with me. Remembering his love, his forgiveness. We ask God to give us that same strength, that same patience and mercy as well. As we live our lives of thanks for the, the wonderful debt that has been removed from our lives forever through the blood of Jesus Christ, may we show that same forgiveness and patience in our lives now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Please stand. May the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please be seated. This time our ushers will be handing out our friendship registers. We ask that you please fill those out with your contact information. That would be fabulous. Uh, and those of you who are joining us online, please be sure to sign our online guest book as well. After that, we have the opportunity to bring up an offering of thanks to our God for his unending patience and forgiveness. this time I'd like to invite forward anyone who has served or is currently serving in our, our military forces. So if any of our men and women would please stand up and please come up here and, and join me up at the front. That would be fantastic. Just kind of line up right up here. There we go. And you got to face them. Okay. <laughs> Line right on up here. And what I would ask you to do is just 
introduce yourself, say your name so everybody knows your name, and then also what branch you served and what your job is or was with the military. Okay. Rob Neely, I'm in the Army for the last 23 years, uh, still going strong. Uh, I've had numerous jobs currently. I'm the Chief of Support Operations. I'm in a Logistics Sustainment Brigade. Okay. I'm Brandon Lowe. Um, I served 14 years in the Air Force <laughs> uh, Gerard Lum, I served 22 years, retired, 14 of those in, uh, well, all Air National Guard, excuse me, 14 in uh, Hawaii with the uh, Combat Aircraft Squadron, and the last eight here in North Carolina, a Combat Bomb Squadron, uh, Tech Control. I'm Corey Sholley, and served seven years, I'm still active duty, serving the infantry, two deployments, Afghanistan and Iraq, and I'm going back in February to Afghanistan. Uh, Holly Hamilton, was in the Air Force for six years, and I was an airborne Arabic linguist. Greg Hamilton, I'm in the Air Force, I've been in uh, for 12 years, and I'm operations for I'm Rex Wapi, I was in the uh, Army, I was a chemical officer. Well, we certainly thank you for the, the wonderful service you provided for us as citizens of our country. And also, we give thanks to God for the wonderful blessings that you have been uh, to our congregation and to our country. Uh, and, and so we'll now bow our heads in prayer. Please, everybody, please, I invite you to stand. Please stand. <clears throat> Almighty God, we acknowledge with thanks that all we have and enjoy is a gift from your gracious hand. We come before you today in heartfelt appreciation for our nation and its people. We thank you for enabling us to worship you in freedom and to serve you without fear. You have enriched us with the bounties of farm and factory, the beauty of forest and mountain, and the marvels of medicine and science. For all these blessings, we praise and glorify you. Look with favor upon our nation and preserve our cherished liberties. Enable our leaders to govern with wisdom, honesty, courage and justice. Protect those who serve in the armed forces and those who maintain peace and safety in our communities. Teach us, Lord, not to worry, but to cast all our cares on you during times of natural uh, catastrophe or calamity. Spare our land from the ravages of disease and war. Strengthen our homes, of, the homes of our nation. By your spirit, lead husbands and wives to love each other parents to nurture their children, young adults to assume responsibility, and to children to show respect. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the wonderful blessings that you've given to our congregation, but today we especially thank you for the brave men and women of our congregation uh, and our church family who have bravely served and are serving our country faithfully. We thank you that you have kept them safe, and we ask that you continue to send out your angels to watch over them and guard them in all their ways. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you our thanks and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, we'll continue by singing uh, the hymn, God Bless Our Native Land, found on the top of page 10. Thank you for coming up. You may go back and be seated. Thank you. 
take our request to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we commit into our prayers June Lum, Gerard Lum's mother, who continues to experience stroke-like symptoms. We thank you for the wonderful blessings that you have given to her of, of health and wellness. But during this time of physical limitation, Lord, we ask that you give her strength to maintain a, a continued positive attitude and continue to remind her of your faithfulness and your love. Continue to show before her the, the, the vision of the cross, which has taken away the horrible disease of sin, and allow that, that vision of the cross to offer her hope uh, and joy and peace. Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, on behalf of Neil and Carlene Gross, who are celebrating their 20th wedding anniversary. We ask that you continue to allow them to uh, grow in, in their love for one another and continue to bless them uh, as they raise the, their children uh, and, and allow their children to grow up uh, in faith uh, and be guided by your word. Heavenly Father, we also pray for Philip and Matthew Allers, uh, who are at a flight academy this week learning how to, how to fly small planes. We ask that you would uh, send your holy angels to keep them safe uh, and, and allow them to, uh, to enjoy their time as they uh, are at the flight academy. Uh, watch over them and bring them safely back to us. Heavenly Father, Holy Physician, we also ask for prayers of healing uh, for Hayes Price, uh, an infant of a friend of the Collins family uh, who has some undiagnosed neurological health problems. Uh, we ask that you offer uh, Hayes' parents um, the, the, the news of your love and the reminder of your strength that you, Lord Jesus, who raised the dead, who healed the sick so many times, who gave sight to the blind and hearing to the deaf. Lord, we know that you can heal Hayes, and we ask that if it be your will, do so. Watch over the, his parents and, and allow them to uh, be reminded of your unending grace and patience and love, uh, and give them uh, strength and encouragement during these times from their families and friends who remind them of your love. All our requests, Lord, we sum up with the prayer our Savior has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our congregation sincerely desires that all join us at the Lord's table. However, if you're unfamiliar with our communion practices, please speak with me after the service if you're interested in joining us. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who promised that wherever two or three come together in his name, there he is with them to shepherd his flock till he comes again in glory. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Christ on the night he was betrayed took bread 
And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. 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 and come forward at the direction of our ushers. Take a knee. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given on the cross for the forgiveness of all your sins. shed on the cross for the forgiveness of all your sins. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you until life everlasting. Depart in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed on the cross for the forgiveness of all your sins. Take a drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in the true faith. Life everlasting. Heart in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take, eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given and poured out for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given and shed on the cross for the remission of all of your sins. 
Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Please stand for the hymn of thanks found on page 13 in our service folder. to share our humanity. We thank you that through him you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. We also pray that you will not forsake us, but will rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit that, so that we will willingly serve you day after day. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Join in singing the blessing. I invite you to join in singing the refrain. May the peace of God, our Heavenly Father, and the grace of Christ the risen Son, and the fellowship of God the Spirit, keep our hearts and minds within his love. And to him be praised for his glorious reign, from the depths of earth to the heights of heaven, we declare the name of the Lamb once slain, Christ eternal, the King of kings. May this 
this peace which passes understanding and this grace which makes us what we are and this fellowship of his communion make us one in spirit and in heart and to him be praise for his glorious reign from the depths of earth to the heights of heaven we declare the name of the lamb once slain christ eternal the king of kings please be seated Good morning. Good, morning. Good morning. Welcome once again. Nice to see all of you here today. Uh, I wish you God's blessings as you celebrate uh, the independence of our country this week. A um, couple things I, I would just like to point out. One, the Pastor Keeker will be installed uh, at uh, Gethsemane in Raleigh next Sunday. If you are planning on attending and staying for the dinner afterwards, please sign up today because today's the deadline. And you can sign up in the bulletin board hallway. So please go do that. Um, if you'd like to go, just so we can give Gethsemane a rough estimate of how many people are going to show up. Um, you know, it was only two years ago that this happened for me, and it was a very cool thing um, to see people from the neighboring congregations all come. So I would highly encourage you to, uh, to go to Pastor Keeker's installation if you can make it next week. Uh, you have the information there uh, when and where. Um, Two, the Project Titus team uh, from Michigan Lutheran Seminary, the high school kids, they're going to be joining us uh, at the end of this month on the 21st. There is a sign-up sheet that looks like this out uh, by the snack table. I would ask that you please take a look at that. Um, there are different time slots, and uh, we're going to have them canvassing uh, around the area and, and helping out with some stuff, some projects around church. Um, if you have... Uh, something that you would like to do for entertainment for them or something like that and you want to sign up for a specific slot you can do that or if you just want to help out somehow donating money or uh, you know having them over for dinner but you're not sure what day just sign up on the dot on the line there and I'll contact you and we'll try and work something out um, there there are already uh, about five families that have told me we're all on vacation that week um, so if you can help out and you've, you've never done it before, get to know these kids. They're awesome kids. We had a group come down last year, um, high school kids, and two of the guys, that was the, the, the thing that made them want to go be pastors. They're studying up at Martin Luther College now, studying to be pastors now, because this, the turning point was their time down here with us. Um, that was pushed them over the edge to go and say, yep, yeah, I, I want to do that for the rest of my life. So not only do they help us tremendously by getting our name out into the community. They also uh, benefit very much from you uh, by being around you, meeting you, and, and encouraging them and with you, your, your, your warm words and your kind prayers to consider going into the full-time public ministry. So if, if you'd like to get involved but don't know how, you've never heard of Project Titus, talk to me and, and we will get you doing something. It's an awesome program and, and uh, hope you can be involved. Um, the other thing was uh, pictures. Um, if you see, remember we did the directory a couple months ago. Um, the Tree of Life tree is in that bulletin board hallway by the back entrance. Uh, so please take a look at that. You can see your smiling pearly whites. They look great. Uh, you look beautiful. Um, if you did not get your picture taken in the directory, um, can I have somebody? Can I have a volunteer to take pictures? Who would like to volunteer to take pictures after church? Thank you, Kathy Allers. I saw your hand shoot up. So, if you did not, seek Kathy out. Kathy, will you stand up? Will you stand up? You're so willing to volunteer. And it was just great. I, your hand shot right up, you know. I saw you first. 